Hello, my friends. Are you like me and you're wondering why maybe on your internet, well, this is all over my internet. I assume it's on your internet. If not, hey, welcome. This is on the internet. Why there's a lawsuit in Texas that somehow could ban medication that would end pregnancy for people like everywhere, even if your state hasn't necessarily said like, we're not doing that anymore. This is in the United States, obviously, because <laughs> where else will we be having these conversations? Um, but you're like, how is that happening? If that one random judge in Texas is somehow controlling the entire country, I don't live in Texas. So this doesn't apply to me. If you're in that boat, uh, bad news bears, it might. And today we're going to be talking about what it is, what this lawsuit is, what they're kind of claiming. Uh, basically this medicine is not that they're, this medicine is not safe. We're going to evaluate that claim. We're going to see how this all works, how you can get around this, right? So there will be a silver lining. This will not be all doom and gloom and kind of looking into this. Basically, I'm taking you on the deep dive that I did on it because for a while I was just saying all sorts of stuff on social media being like, they're going to ban this and it's going to be awful. It's going to make everything so difficult. And I was like, it's in Texas only. I don't know why everyone's freaking out. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh, I get it. I see. This is a slightly, this is a little bit problematic indeed. But like I said, we have silver linings. So today we're going to be talking about the lawsuit that people have filed against a against the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, and how this could affect people like Pre uh, terminations of pregnancy uh, via a pill. So we're going to be using words, avoiding the one that starts with A because the YouTubes do not like that, but that's what we're talking about. Medication to end pregnancies. We are not going to be discussing the, like, if you think that this is uh, the entire, like, ter pregnancy termination, whether it's elective or not, if that's good or bad, I think it's healthcare. Uh, I have a whole video that you can watch if you are so inclined and talks about how I went from very, very pro life 10 years ago. And now we have wandered over to a uh, very, very, very pro choice and kind of the choices that went in between there, how that exactly happened. Okay. Liz of 10 years ago, very different human versus Liz of right now. Uh, but this video is mostly on this lawsuit and how it affects things. Like I said, if you want to go over to that one, I've linked it down below. You can go watch that. And if you want to fight and, you know, like argue your cause respectfully here, it's great for engagement by all means have at it. If you're watching live, please just either way, do it respectfully. But if you're mean, I'll block you. So <laughs> we don't tolerate hatred or, you know, anything like that here. And we do like science. So we're all about that. Welcome. If you're watching live. Hello. Welcome. Let us know how you are feeling this evening. And if you're watching on the replay crew, same thing. Hello and welcome. Thanks for being here, everyone. If you have any other fun tidbits to add, of course, along the way, do let me know. It took me way too long, side note, to figure out how our government works, okay? I did not pay attention in civics class in high school. I very much admit that. I, was, I just did not. I was very busy doing other things, <laughs> such as sleeping, literally. It was like first period, 7 a.m., senior year. No. So I had to figure out how the entire federal court system worked took me forever. So if you are like me, we're going to be discussing that today. Here is the case though that we have. So here it is. One Texas judge, and this is like the headlines you see everywhere that I thought were just being dramatic. One Texas judge will decide the fate on abortion pills. You, if they will, and whether they will be used by William, let's just start over. Shall we? <laughs> One Texas judge will decide fate of abortion pill used by millions of American women. There we go. We made it. <laughs> We did it. We got it out of our mouths. We did it. Um, yeah. So again, I thought you live in Texas. I live in a state that, uh, you know, believes in science and thinks that you should be allowed healthcare. Uh, so I didn't think I was going to like, this could be affected, affecting my state. Wrong, wrong, Liz, wrong. Um, and it, you know, <laughs> It's interesting. Um, so this lawsuit is being brought by a Christian legal group. It argues basically that the FDA process for more than two decades ago when they approved this medicine, Mifepristone, was flawed. It said that it was basically author when they agreed to approve the medicine in 2000, um, that it said pregnancy was an illness and it should have said pregnancy was a condition. And when you file a new medicine as a illness, it can be a quicker, a quicker slide into getting something approved. So they are saying now, you know, 
13, 23 years later. Oh, I wish 2000 was 13 years ago. Maybe I don't, but yikes. Um, they're saying 23 years later that, Hey, it got approved too quickly and you skirted some things, right? Um, it, which is not true. And they have proved that that was not true later, but that's where they're going against. However, the kicker here is the person who is filing like in charge of filing the lawsuit has literally come out and said that even if they had all the science and data in the world to back up a claim that this medicine was in fact safe, uh, they would still go and fight against it. And no amount of data would ever prove to them that this was an okay medicine because they just don't want it to be okay. They just don't agree with it. So I was like, that's a weird thing to bring a lawsuit forward and be like, we don't think this medicine is safe. We think you cut corners when you were trying to get it approved and we need more data, which is what their lawsuit says. We'll look at their lawsuit in a minute. And so people are like, actually, no, we have data. We do have data. This is great. And they were like, actually, no, no amount of data would ever be enough. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? They're like, we just don't like this. Uh, so that's where we are. And, uh, Malika, that's okay. If you unsubscribe, um, it would be great to maybe hear a, a, like a different appoint, uh, position, but I found that, you know, that's not always common of people wanting to hear other thought processes. And again, we're talking mostly about the lawsuit today, but bye-bye. Have a good life. Um, it is, if this lawsuit, so they're uh, filing a lawsuit against the Federal Drug Administration, like I said, saying that it was cutting corners, right? And the medicine that is in, um, uh, that we're looking at is, I don't know why they have misopristol on here. Cause the medicine that is actually being looked at is mifepristone. Uh, and we will go over what, how those two act together. There's two medicines, right. That act together in order to terminate a pregnancy chemically like via medicine and they act together. Well, we'll look at that. This is targeting just one of them. Okay. So, uh, mifepristol has been around for a very long time. It is, going to kind of be the option when this gets overruled, um, you know, but, uh, cause it will get overruled and we'll look at why, but, um, you know, <laughs> here we are. Uh, so it, what happens if this lawsuit gets over, uh, if this lawsuit is successful with the FDA and they say, Hey, you're right. Um, the judge decides that, you know, this is unsafe. Cause that's how they're blanketing it. They're saying that this medicine is unsafe and it causes lots of side effects. It doesn't, it's safer than Tylenol. Um, but you know, as they said, they don't really care about the actual facts of things. If this does go and it gets, uh, they win the lawsuit with the FDA, the FDA will have to pull its approval basically and decide what they want to do with it. Um, and then you won't be able to order, like get it available in the United States. If successful, uh, it would force federal officials to rescind Mifepristone's approval and manufacturers would be unable to ship the drug anywhere in the United States. So that's kind of what it's up against. Okay. So what is this medicine in the first place? Okay. So we have, we have a slide for that. Um, uh, what is mifepristone? Mifepristone is the first of two medicines used in medication abortion. It is other also important to note that this is one of the first medicines that is really only used for this purpose, right? It did not get FDA approval for anything else, right? A lot of other, um, medicines like misoprostol, um, like Mr. Midwife had said is side attack. It's also used as like a medicine for, um, uh, it's used for things in labor. It's used for, it was originally approved for like, uh, gastric ulcers. So the mifepristone, the one that they're suing about is only used for medication termination, which is why they're kind of going after it. Um, it is, like I said, it was approved 23 years ago. Um, it has a safety record of over 99%. Like I said, it's been, uh, researched to the Hills because of what it is. Right. Uh, and it is, has been largely found to be very, very safe. They're blanketing this whole thing as this medicine is unsafe. They skipped corners they didn't skip corners. The medicine has been proven to be safe. No one's up in arms about Tylenol. No one's up in arms about any other medicine that has way more risk to it. But you know, it, it's a cover for taking this option away from people. It's a cover to just like control people. Right. Um, so what does this medicine actually do? Uh, and to clarify MSA, they are against mifepristone, not, uh, misopristol. I know it's rude they sound very similar. I know, trust me. I know it's rude. Uh, they are against mifepristone. Um, so that's the one that is only for terminations. 
And the way they both work, just in case you are curious, like I was about how all of this happens, uh, you would go if you were doing a uh, termination. This can also happen if you are um, like if you have an early miscarriage and you are needing to. I mean, that is technically an abortion as well because it's an ending of a pregnancy. Um, mifepristone goes in and it blocks progesterone, and progesterone is the hormone that makes your uterus nice and fluffy, so that. Ed, like it, anything will nestle in the lining and have nutrients. So it takes away the progesterone and then misoprostol is the one that will go and cause like cramping so that you can evacuate it. That's how this works. So we would be skipping the removing the fluffy uterus lining. Okay. Um, that is where we, that is what this medicine does. Now, Key and you have a termination with only misoprostol. That's the one that was approved for many other things that just goes in and causes cramping. Yes. It is 80% effective versus 99. So that is one thing that like is still going to be out there. Even if this does get their, they win their lawsuit, which I think they will, we'll show you why. Um, so that will still be out there. Right. So first tiny silver lining, does it suck that we're taking away something that is way more effective and shown to have like less side effects? Cause you have a lot more side effects if you only do it with the misoprostol method. Uh, so ironically they're pretending, right. That they're like, Oh, we, well, this is unsafe for people. We want this to be better for them and more safe and blah, blah, blah. So they're giving people a m less safe option with more side effects, but you know, <laughs> they came out and said that it was literally not about what they said it was about. So we're not shocked. We're not shocked. Um, so that's, that's what this medicine does. Um, let me see this is the actual, what are the side effects? That's what I was going to look at because in the lawsuit, right? Let's go back here in the lawsuit. They are saying that, um, it is that the whole reason they're doing, like I said, is to, because it's not safe. Here's the actual lawsuit, right? It is brought by, this is interesting. Um, the Alliance for Hippocratic medicine on behalf of itself, its members and its organizations, the American association of pro-life obstetricians and gynecologists. So there's no agenda there, right? There, there certainly, it's interesting that no one bringing this lawsuit is from any actual, like one of the large reputable organizations, right? So ACOG would be the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. They're not bringing this. The American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists is. Um, the, also the American College of Pediatrics, which when you first read that, you might think, oh, that's like the pediatric people. No, my dudes. The American Association of Pediatrics is the real one. Not that this one's not real. I guess I shouldn't say that. The, the one with much more credentials. <laughs> the one with much more around them. Um, so this is like, you know, the American college of pediatrics is very, very, uh, along the same lines of very selective science, very pro-life, very, all of that, the Christian medical and dental associations, you get the point. All of these are very, very, very pro-life, uh, organizations that are bringing this lawsuit, um, in, against the FDA. Uh, and yes, nurse Scott, fun fact, the Hippocratic oath includes a promise not to perform an abortion. It does. So I was looking into that because I was like, that is interesting. Um, because the Alliance for the Hippocratic for Hippocratic medicine, that is, they are claiming that, you know, we're all for science and we're very like Hippocratic oath. Um, and I was like, does the Hippocratic oath really say that? Because I've certainly never, I'm not a physician. I didn't take that. And there are versions that there's many versions of it now, but like the original one looks like, uh, it did say like, I will not ever basically like it explicitly said that you wouldn't ever give, I think a woman a pessary is what it said in order to terminate a pregnancy. So they are sticking to that document. They're like, you know what? <laughs> We've got a lot of new data. We've got a lot of new science. Things have changed in the last, I don't know, 2000 years, but we should stick <laughs> to this document. That's like 2000 years old because that's the cause of medicine. <laughs> let's stick to it. Let's not update at all. We like that version from back from when we were literally writing on papyrus. <laughs> oh, send help. But they make it sound like we're actually founding on like what medicine was built on. <laughs> You're like, that was literally 2000 years ago, 2000 years ago. My goodness. So they're bringing it against the food and drug administration. As we saw, 
And they are complaining that the FDA failed America's women and girls when it chose politics over science and approved chemical abortion drugs for the United States. And it has continued to fail them by repeatedly removing even the most basic precautionary requirements associated with their use, which is insane <laughs> because uh, there has not been, I don't know if there's, this is one of the most studied medications in the world because of how controversial it is. Right. And that's something that you can, uh, you know, we have science, we have lots of studies to show us that this medicine is safe. So everything they're saying, like I said, is just digging their heels. And this is all a front for just that they don't want this drug to exist there. Uh, the U S food and drug administration must protect the health, safety and um, welfare of all Americans by rejecting or limiting the use of dangerous drugs. So that's where we're going here. Uh, fun fact. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean the FDA, they, they're not that great, right? I'm not like a huge FDA stan. <laughs> But uh, they have a lot of medicine out there that is not that safe. I can list many that I would probably pick a bone with before I would ever pick a bone with this one just out of safety, right? There's all sorts of things the FDA is like, it's fine. It's totally cool. And you're like, well, maybe we should just like take a moment and step back. <laughs> no, it's fine. Fine. This is where we'll go. Um, and so it just goes all the way through. I've linked all of these down below. If you are, you know, the type that likes to read 113 page lawsuits, it basically is filled with a bunch of fluff, uh, where they try to make points, but they can't really make points because the science doesn't back them up. Uh, the only way, only way the FDA could have approved the, this medicine was to accelerate its drug approval authority, necessitating that the FDA call pregnancy an illness and argue that these dangerous drugs provide a meaningful therapeutic benefit over treatments. So let's say that's true, right? Cause I was going into like skeptic mode and I'm like, but what if? All this time ago, that is true. And that's how they got it approved. Um, this is not this medicine's first rodeo with this, right? So this long ago, actually, they did look into this and they said, uh, but what if that is true? What if you did cut corners? That would be certainly not good. Well, um, they did look into that, right? So in 2008, uh, the people were equally mad about this. They were like, I don't like it. Uh, I think you cut corners. So they did a, uh, whole investigation into this in 2008 into mifepristone and found that, Oh wait, <laughs> you did file it incorrectly, right? You should have probably said pregnancy is not an illness. It's a condition. But even if we go back and look at the situation, if it had been filed as a condition, not a illness, would you pass? And I think these people were really hopeful that it would not, but it did. They said, Oh, you actually do have enough. You have more than enough data to show that it was safe, even if you had filed it the correct way. Should they have filed it the correct way the first time? For sure. For sure. Uh, they didn't. It was then looked into and they said, oh, turns out even if you had, it was fine. You, you have enough research. This is actually not that, uh, you know, the side effects are not that bad. Go figure. So uh, they disproved it then. Unsure uh, how they are weaseling it out, weaseling their way out of things currently in their lawsuit. This is a federal lawsuit. So this was filed in a federal court. So you can't like watch it on TV. It, they don't publicize, like publish the records of it. I'm obviously not there. I don't know. I think they're doing it like this Friday. Um, so <sighs> That's where we are. <laughs> we don't really know how they are arguing it. I would certainly, if I was the lawyer representing the FDA, I would be like, we already did this. Look at all the research. Uh, however, I don't think it's going to matter at all in the decision that this court is going to make because the person that was appointed to this court where they specifically filed this is very, very anti-reproductive uh, rights of women. So that's convenient. So shall we, for a moment, um, We'll look at that. But first I found the quote. So Harley, one of the people was the ones that's like bringing forth this lawsuit against the FDA was literally quoted saying, uh, no amount of scientific data would be enough to convince me that mifepristone should be on the market. I think chemical abortion does great harms to women and their unborn children. And that's what this lawsuit is really about. So we're saying the quiet part out loud. Okay. Um, right out loud here is let's take a detour really quick. If you're like me, Okay. We'll come back to this, but let's discuss briefly put on our, I have gone to law tube university here on Google with Emily D Baker. Uh, and I'm going to pretend I'm a lawyer. Okay. I'm not a real lawyer, but 
the federal court system. Okay. If you're like me, you're like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> what the heck is the difference? So in the United States, we have the federal court system and the state court system, right? The federal court system handles like 10% of the cases that come across all lawsuits, right? The states handle the other like 90%, right? The 10% that the federal court system will handle are things that deal directly with the U S government. So if you are suing the U S government, which is why we are here, the U S federal, the U S FDA federal drug administration. I was like, what's the word that's the country, right? It's a federal organization. So you get to be in federal court for this. Uh, also, if you are having like an interstate dispute and the cost is more than like $75,000 or something, if you are, a, a seafaring, if you're like a pirate, you get to be in federal court because the States were like, no, that's a, that's a bigger issue than we would prefer to handle. And, um, I think like patents or something very odd, right? Something random. They get to go to federal court. Okay. So we're already in our niche specialty. The interesting thing about federal court is you, there are very few, since it's much smaller, you can kind of know who's going to try your case because there's less judges, right? So everything is kind of mapped out in the country and you're assigned to different zones. Okay. And then, you know, exactly who the judge is in your zone. Okay. This would be much harder to figure out in like, if you were in a regular state court, but they purposely took this lawsuit right to a northern Texas federal court where there was conveniently only one judge. And that one judge was uh, this person that had been appointed. What is his name? Where did your name go? Matthew Kaksimarki. Kaksimarik. Sure. Uh, and this individual is the judge who was appointed over this Amarillo federal court, Amar Amarillo federal court. Don't know. Um, it's not yellow in Spanish. Um, anyway, <laughs> ADHD, uh, they, he has been very involved in like the first Liberty Institute, all sorts of very like pro-life, uh, pro-lifey things. He is here. They conveniently filed it in this court where he is the only presiding judge. So he would have to be the one hearing this case, right? Looking at his track record, this does not appear to be a dude that is probably going to be the most receptive to science, right? Not the most at all receptive to science. So we're probably, this would be a good place to file this if you just wanted this lawsuit to immediately go your way. Most of my understanding here is that this will only go before a judge. This will not go before in front of a, uh, this won't be voted on by like the public. This will not be a trial where you get like the jury and all of that. This will be like, here's our information where all these people who are presenting this lawsuit will be on one side. And then the defendants, you know, the people from the FDA are going to be like, but science. Uh, and I think in my imaginings of this situation, maybe I'll be blown away. Maybe I'll be blown away. And the judge will actually listen and be like, oh, science, this makes sense. There's, this is very well <laughs> represented information that like, this is actually okay. Um, I think my, me thinks that it'll probably be more of a situation where they're like, Oh yeah, I don't like this either. Denied FDA. No. So it goes before a judge this week. We will find out what they say. If they overturn it, like I said, then the FDA has to figure out, uh, they have to pull it back, right? They have to say, okay, this isn't approved anymore. They then have other choices. Do we want to appeal it? Um, <laughs> if you appeal it, things don't look great friends, right? So the way this happens is if they say we would like to change this decision, it would go the appellate court. So the one where you go and say, I like to challenge this, right? One level up that's called the, uh, circuit court. And that's, we're in Texas. So we're in the Brown right here, circuit court five, very conservative again, very, very, very would have judges, uh, who are very pro-life. And it basically sits in front of a couple judges and they plead their case again. It would likely get overturned. It can then go to the Supreme court. Do we think the Supreme court is going to pick this up? No. Uh, has, how has the Supreme court recently <laughs> been viewing things like this poorly. So low luck there. So I imagine this will get overturned and, um, it'll be a little bit of a uh, sticky situation for this. They might have to, I don't know if they can go back and prove with their data, like, Hey, we've, we've actually, <laughs> we've done all of this. Like we have already showed that this medicine is safe. I don't know how they're going to get out of this pickle friends. I would buckle up and expect that this will <laughs> 
this will be out outlawed here soon. And so we'll have to go back to the one medicine medicine, which is Mr. Pristol, which is like 80% effective, but has a ton more side effects, which is a bummer that once again, we are doing things the backwards way. <laughs> dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Um, you know, still extremely safe, but only 80% effective. So, uh, it does feel like our freedoms and rights for women are literally going backwards. I, especially when I tell you the next part. Okay. So that's bad news, right? That this is probably going to go backwards and that's how it's going to be. And it feels a little bit like you can't do anything. Cause this is all in like the federal courts. And it's not like you could fail to reelect these people that are making these decisions. Right. Because normally you could be like, this really makes me mad. I'm going to write, you know, not that it does a ton, but you can, uh, write to your like Congress people, your legislators, right. Because you elect them. Bad news bears here, a friend, bad news bears. Uh, this is not in the legislative part of the government. Okay. This is in the judicial part of the government, right? So we have the executive, that's the president. We have the legislative, that's all of our, you know, Senate and our house people. And then we have the judicial and that's all the, uh, all the judges, right? These people, we elect the state ones, the ones that cover 90% of the cases, weirdly enough, right? Uh, we don't elect the ones that are in charge of the federal things. So that's elected by the president, uh, and bad news bears here. If you hate them, we can't do anything about it because the positions are for life. Um, so <laughs> there's really, it feels a little bit like your hands are tied because they're making these important choices and we cannot literally elect them out or get rid of them. Um, <laughs> don't know what to do there. Here's what you can do though. Okay. This is where things get a little bit more surreal because I was like, this is seeming stressful, uh, that we're going to be moving quite backwards when this does get approved. Maybe, maybe we'll be surprised. Maybe we'll be surprised. You can order birth control pills from Europe. Okay. This is when we start getting really, really into the zone of, do we live in, uh, what's the movie? <laughs> the one listed, blessed be the fruit one. Um, what is it called? Handmaid's Tale. Do we live in the Handmaid's Tale? Because you can get your, uh, termination pills from, Europe. Uh, so I've lived like this, um, uh, website down below. This is, uh, something that Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, she has, I'll leave her socials linked down below too. Uh, of she's very much, she's an OBGYN and she is understandably upset that all of this is happening. So she has gone and helped partnered with create this organization. She does a ton of advocacy work for reproductive access. Uh, and she, this is something I found via her. So basically this Mayday Health is a nonprofit organization that will help you get pills from Europe because we have to outsource them from Europe. I'm not totally sure how, like it works on all the things, but basically even if you live in a state that does not have access to termination, you can still get this, uh, because they have not started going through all of our mail yet. Okay. That's literally where we were at. There is something in this lawsuit that would say you can't get medicine like this by mail, but how are they going to know? Okay. At least for now. So, uh, we're going to cross that bridge when we come to it, but this week, <laughs> maybe by the end of this week, it'll be different. Um, but you can get this from European aid access because we need help from other part of the world, other parts of the world in order to just have basic healthcare. <laughs> basic healthcare that we have to outsource from other countries. So I've left this link down below. If you would like to check it out, if this is something you need, there's also this like mail forwarding access way, but yikes. So, um, that's where we are. That's the dystopian part <laughs> that I just was like, I cannot wrap my head around this, that the safety net we have is literally begging other countries to come and help us because they're, they're embarrassed. Let me tell you, let me tell you, <laughs> um, that the rest of the world is laughing at us. Like, what are you even doing? What are you even doing? Um, that's where we are. So here's where, here's where, here's where we be. Uh, so that's, what's happening. That's the basic rundown of what this lawsuit is. I think it will win. I think they will win. I think the FDA will have to pull it back. Um, and you know, if you happen to know anything of the legal things and say like, Liz, that's totally wrong 
please do let me know. I did run this by, uh, some legal people and they, unfortunately <laughs> they were like, you're on the right page. And that's sad. Um, but you know, there's always lots and lots to learn and goodness gracious, this is a hot mess. I would love if we would just, you know, um, <laughs> respect reproductive access. And if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do this. I don't know if the FDA can reapprove the med. I would imagine so. Right. I don't know what they would have to do for your approval. The FDA approving a med is a long process. So I don't know if they would get a shortcut. seems like there should be able to be a shortcut and be like, Hey, people have been taking this for 23 years for this exact purpose. And it's actually really safe. Here's the 8 million studies to back it up. But we all know that the FDA, I mean, I have no love, <laughs> no great love for the FDA. Uh, they are, uh, like I said, I think they approve lots of interesting things. They don't approve lots of other interesting things that should be, uh, they it's, it's a very slow process, right? So maybe that's why they had tried to cut corners originally. Um, who knows? Because they were probably like, why would this take 12 years when we have a great solution to this problem? Let's just do this. And then forgot that there's, you know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, she wolf. I've been seeing all your comments. I am not a lawyer, like you said, but I won't shut up as you recommended because I'm stubborn. Wow. No discussion on other issues that could make this dangerous. Wow. Let's discuss what makes this dangerous by all means let us. So this medicine, like I said, is safer than Tylenol. Um, it, which is generally was well, something, you know, that as a nurse practitioner, I feel pretty comfortable telling people they can take, don't take too much of it. Fun fact. We have to learn that we should in Liz, you know, when Liz eventually takes over the world, uh, that will be covered in health class. Cause we don't really teach about having seen a lot of Tylenol overdoses. Tylenol can be dangerous, right? If you take oodles and oodles of it, but even in normal strength, this is safer than Tylenol. So that's great news. Here are some of the side effects. Shall we take a look at them? Um, like I said, they're very rare. Uh, 0.4% of people who take this have a serious side effect, which is much better than pretty much any other medicine out there. Uh, it has been studied on millions and millions and millions of people because it is, uh, you know, it is something that is highly contested and here we are. So, um, these are the side effects of it because we should talk about both sides of it. Uh, side effects would be heavy bleeding. Um, you have abdominal pain or feeling sick and then a fever. Uh, so those are the most common ones, um, that you have, you, uh, you know, what you would kind of expect for something like this, if you're going to be, you know, taking it. Uh, so not very many people have those. Okay. Um, it is, uh, very, very rare. 0.4% of people will even have these. And then of these, the number of like serious, serious things is even lower. So those are your risks. Again, if you would prefer to not have this, you don't have to do it. This is not ever met. No medicine is ever without any, uh, risk, right? but you have to weigh in this situation, what is riskier, uh, in the article, in the lawsuit, they are claiming that this is riskier than a DNC, which is, uh, not, not true. Just like statistically not true. I, for a brief moment, I was going to go through the entire lawsuit and like point out everything that is like literally incorrect, like just factually incorrect. And it's very unfortunate that I think this will sit in front of a judge that, does not care, probably will not view the facts. And again, maybe I'll be really surprised because factually you can literally go through, even me as a non OBGYN as just a family practice nurse practitioner can go through and find all this reason, like this data showing that this is factually not true there. This pill is not riskier than a DNC, right? A dilation and curatage where you would go through the cervix and kind of scoop out the contents of the uterus. Uh, this medicine is safer it's having this medicine taken and having a, like, if we're just looking at what is riskier, it is safer to take this medicine and end a pregnancy than to go through with pregnancy period. So, because pregnancy in itself is one of the riskier things that people do in their lifetime. Right. So if you're really just looking at it from a risk perspective, the risk would be, well, of course, like, no, if you really looked at it from a risk perspective, like nobody would ever go through pregnancy, right? Because pregnancy carries so, so, so many risks with it. This medicine is so much safer than continuing on with the pregnancy. Many people choose to, because many people 
would like to have babies. I have two. I, that was my choice. You know what I mean? But it was a choice that I got to make to say, I will accept that risk the risk I go into, uh, the, and I did have a bunch of issues with my pregnancy. It was not a good time. Those were, it was rough, but I chose that. And that's the whole crux of the whole thing, right? Is that you should be able to choose to take that risk. Uh, so that is the other side of it is this medicine. Yes. And all the risks should be explained to someone before they take this medicine. It is not without risk. Uh, but you know, life's not a vacuum. Life is all about weighing risks and benefits and, it just makes no sense to go after this medicine when there's so many other medicines that are so much riskier that, you know, have approval when this medicine has gone through the full approval process, they have the data to show it is very safe. They're not going after it, this medicine, because it is not safe. Right. And the people who have filed the lawsuit have literally said that <laughs> they said, it's not about the safety of the medicine. We don't like what the medicine does. So it's a lawsuit built on lies essentially. This medicine, whether you like it or not, is safe and effective. Uh, and they're just <laughs> deciding that this is one more thing that they would like to control. And it's very dystopian and feels a little bit overwhelming. So definitely you can go check out that other website if you would like to look at this. I'll try to give an update once the ruling comes out of what the FDA decides to do. Maybe maybe we'll have a celebratory party where it's like, wow, the person listened to science. And yay, science. Because uh, again, this shouldn't be something where they're considering, do I like the medicine, right? No, you shouldn't be thinking about that. You should be ruling the evidence of, does this actually show a, did they really cut so many corners and like, you know, they're trying to eventually say like they cut all the corners and shoved this out and no one's taken it in 23 years and we have no other data. Oh, yikes. Um, here we are. Uh, we'll see. This is interesting. The lawsuit mentions, keeps mentioning the lack of pediatric trials and PREA, but PREA wasn't enacted until three years after it was approved. So that's interesting. Um, what is, I don't even know what PD, PREA is, but it might, let's Google it really quick. Let's do some research. PREA pediatrics. What is that? Pediatric research equality act. Okay. So basically it would have to be, what does it say? comply with the pediatric research. Um, we'll share our research. We can research together. Um, basically that re PREA requires new drug applications and biologic license applications for a new ingredient, new indication, new dosing regimen, or route of administration to contain a pediatric assessment, unless the applicant has obtained a waiver or deferral. Okay. So that makes sense. So you have to test this medicine on children, right? Um, so, uh, you know, <laughs> how dare they not include this research in the lawsuit or <laughs> in the approval when it didn't even exist? Uh, they should have known. I mean, since we're not going on fact here, we're just going on feelings about this. Uh, they obviously should have predicted the future and, um, <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, Felicia, it's really a question of, I don't know why governments think they know more than educated uh, health care professionals, but it, and it's even more mind boggling to me here, right? That uh, typically, now I'm not like speaking across, like, you know, there are obviously outliers here, um, but usually people who are in the category of like really trying to push back on uh, like these medicines and stuff are, would I would assume be like conservative uh, in like Republican and Republicans are usually very like anti big government. Right. So the thing that really confuses me about all of this is like the party who's like hating government restricting everything and like having too big of a hand is always the one who's like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. I want to dictate what you can do in your uterus. Mm -mm. We don't want any of that. I want to control how you can dress in public. Uh, I want to control everything. I'm like, you're not supposed to be like that. I thought you were like the little, you don't like government. <laughs> Very confused. What is happening here? Uh, so I don't understand that at all, but they seem typically, it seems to be that that all goes out the window when it's women, <laughs> right? When it's like anyone with a uterus, uh, all of a sudden they're like, no, no, we'd like to control that. Please don't you be getting too much money and thinking you're all that you silly woman, you silly woman. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Un, unsure. Uh, why, but why test a pre-pubertal child? What? Yeah. I don't think it would be uh pre-pubertal, right? It wouldn't be, it would just be pediatrics would be 18 and under. So I think you would, they would have to test the medicine on anyone who's 18 and younger. They have a ton of data on, right. Cause that's still a child. Uh, they have a ton of data on this medicine being used with children 18 and under because a lot of people have needed it. Right. So that's where we are. Um, that's, that's where it would be. So, and they have the data, like I said, now to support that they can go back and say, Hey, look, we do have the safety profiles for this. You're right. We didn't have it at the time because we couldn't read your mind, but here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Um, yeah. Also it's a very odd thing. Um, I, Sandy said, I'm sick of religious addendas in our legal system. Isn't that why America was founded? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. There was supposed to be separation of church and state it seems to be rapidly going back out the window. <laughs> um, rapidly, uh, confused again, confused. Um, that's where we are. So here we go. Maybe we'll have a positive update. Uh, but this is, (laughs) it's just alarming and frustrating. Like, and again, I tried to include that other stuff so that wasn't like all doom and gloom, but it's just very, I think helpful to know one, what the facts are. Right. Uh, because I was confused. I was like, maybe other people are confused, uh, who haven't had, you know, an entire Monday to go and try to figure out what on earth is a federal court chat GPT. And I were, I was asking chat GPT and then it would send me off in a direction. Cause I couldn't even, didn't even know where to start <laughs> with our whole government system. I'm like chat GPT, send me in the right direction. And then I found a lot of YouTube videos that were trying to teach me. I'm like, but why? <laughs> what is happening? Um, and that's where we are. Also, interestingly, even though they filed at this court in Texas, like I never could figure this out. I like tried to figure out how they were allowed to do that. Right. Because none of the people in the lawsuit are from Texas. All of those organizations are founded in like Tennessee and other state Florida and other States, but they were like, well, we have some physicians that work for us that live in Texas. So they're bringing the lawsuit when really they were filing it at that specific court because it only has one judge and they know exactly how he'll vote. So (laughs) it makes you a little bit disheartened when you get in there and realize how all of this, all of this happens. And I'm sure that happens on both sides. You know, I'm sure there are lots of lawsuits that are filed in a court where like in the ninth circuit or something, which is very, very liberal leaning where like they know the answer they'll get by filing there. But it was just, I don't recommend looking into our government. Okay. I it's (laughs) my husband will tell you yesterday night. I was just angry. (laughs) I was not in a good place of, I was like, this is how all of this is happening. And it gets through and a mess, an absolute, absolute mess. Um, yeah. So that's, (laughs) Yeah. None of this really shocks me. Yeah. None of it really does. Uh, that's true at the same time. Um, you know, that's where we are. And she wolf, you don't have to do anything that any of these things, if you don't want to do all of these things, by all means, do not do any of them. You don't have to do any of these procedures. You don't have to take any of these medicines. You seem like you're not really into anything that I would say my, like science has shown us is like super helpful and that's fine. You have complete That's the whole point of this, right? Is you do you and you have autonomy over your situation and everyone else gets to pick for them. They get to see how the science lines up on their part. We're just super not into other people deciding that their fake science (laughs) is like going to control what goes on in other people's bodies, right? That's, that's how this whole thing is getting frustrated. Cause I'm all, I'm with you. Actually, you might think we're like on opposite sides, but I actually think that you should be able to do what you want to do. And I should be able to do what I want to do. Um, <laughs> hi y'all taking a short, lighthearted break from farm studying. I mean, if this is not a lighthearted break, I don't know what is nursing anonymous. Thanks for becoming a channel member. I appreciate you. We have a discord server where we have fun, random rambles and you know, you get fun emojis and stuff and my eternal thanks. So thanks friend. Um, yeah, maybe you, uh, Scott and Mel, you can team up and study farm together. Uh, so there we go. Um, fun. My nurse Adrian said, Hey, fun fact in Virginia, the state passed a tax rebate for buying a gun. Yay. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Here we go. Uh, in what state is it? There's a state is South Carolina 
is making it so that I think you can uh, be charged with murder if you have a termination of a pregnancy and they have the death penalty. So <laughs> I decided not to even go down that route. I was like, I cannot handle that today. But I discovered that while I was uh, <laughs> looking into all of this and I was like, things that we cannot handle today. <laughs> we cannot handle today. Um, also, hi, Irene. I feel like we're in all the same internets lately, <laughs> just chatting away. Um, if I never say hi to you in like other people's streams, it's because I immediately got lost and I'm on my phone and I can't type out a whole name and then I get distracted. So I always see you and I appreciate you saying hi. Um, and yeah, yeah. South Carolina, my dudes, yikes, just big, big yikes, big yikes. Um, <laughs> <gasps> big yikes. Um, oh, nursing and honestly, I love your channel. Also, I get done <laughs> tons of cooking and laundry done. Good. Yay. I know I, everything I switched. I don't even remember when I switched to live streaming. It was whenever my life hit chaos and I was like, I like more like chatty, less formal videos. They're one, I don't have to edit them, which is huge and awesome Two. Uh, they're, I don't know. I felt like they were more like authentic and easy. And three, I really like what, like, I watch a lot of, like I said, like other channels that do live streaming type of things. And I just like them because you can interact with people, but they're very long and I apologize, but I'm glad for you. It's been productive. <laughs> That's what I use it. I'm like, put all my little like YouTube videos in where people are just chatting and you know, I get, I get life done. It's like a friend in my ear. So I hope if you're listening to this, you feel like you have a friend in your ear and we're all here. Um, and Kemp said, it's not murder if it's self-defense. Uh, but remember we're not <sighs> pregnancy is perfect and wonderful and always safe and just the best for everyone. You don't get to decide that on your own. Uh, Yeah. And Adrian, this is good advice. We get to step up our game. We've got to step up our game and be active politically and educated in science. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Please do this. I always do try to give you an outlet of either a solution or someone to go reach out to here. Again, we're a little bit tied because this is like, uh, I don't know how to fix the whole federal court system where we have judges that are not elected by us. Uh, frightening. Just just frightening. You get one, like, and I mean, it happens on both sides. Like I was, when I was looking into this, I was, it was like a bunch of people like complaining that the presidents are like loading up the court systems with whoever they like. Of course they're going to, right. That happens on both sides. When there's a Republican president, they're going to put a bunch of people who are like probably super duper on the hardcore side into the federal court system. When it's a Democrat, they're going to do the same thing, right? So this happens on both sides. It's just very unfortunate because then you have an even more of a divide. There's no one who's like sitting there in the middle being like, let me see the data. They're like, no, I've got big feelings. And this is how we're going to rule with my feelings and not anything else. And no one can stop me because I'm the only judge here. And when you appeal it, we're in another bubble of <laughs> like, <laughs> ah, get me out of here. Get me out. Get me out. Yes, Wink. I'm glad you like the live videos. <laughs> It's me and you, me and you like them. And we're here. Uh, well, she said this makes me think of a recent lawsuit in Florida where a woman in jail claimed her fetus was being illegally detained. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I wonder if she won. I would imagine not, but especially in Florida. Uh, that is interesting then. Um, this Adrian says, this is truly an agenda of anti-democratic billionaires using wedges used to distract from economic slavery, taking over the country that I can't even begin to wrap my head around, but I, you're probably right. Adrian's pretty much always right. But, uh, that I'm sure, I'm sure it's a distraction technique, right? Because this is something that gets everyone obviously understandably mad, but who knows, <laughs> who knows where we, what is really happening, uh, underneath the water. I don't even know if I want to go into that. Do we, I don't even think I want to know. Don't really want to know. Don't really want to know. Um, no, uh, oh, and period tracking apps, highly discouraged as the States will track young women, high school students, et cetera. That's terrifying. I never thought of that. So just think about that. <laughs> just use that with a grain of salt. Um, just use that as a grain of salt. Um, 
uh, go from there. Uh, Natalie says, can you do a live on anxiety medication? Yeah, we, I'm going to probably do a video soon on updates on, uh, mental health stuff ever since I stopped taking Zoloft. Uh, but I am trying to figure out a way. Well, first we have to be able to film it without crying, which, cause I don't know if I was going to do that one live because it's very, there's a lot of big feelings. I don't know if I can do that live, but then I can't film it without crying. And I don't want to just be like a bubbly, like disaster on the internet. And then I'm like, maybe I'm oversharing. I don't know what I'm, what I should share. And then we just go into like a pan, like a spiral of paralysis because I'm like, maybe that's like too much to share. And I'm like, maybe what if I give the wrong information and something, I don't know, like, and also since I stopped going, uh, stopped Zoloft, which we've talked about, like why, uh, I don't want other people to stop if it's working. Like, I don't want people to see that video and be like, oh, I'm going to stop like, because this person stopped, but maybe that's probably me making myself the main character when no one would really watch it and be like, have those thoughts, but welcome (laughs) to mental health struggle town. That's what's going through my head and why those videos, that video has not made an appearance on the internet. It's been filmed like seven times. And every time I'm like, this is awful. I hate everything, (laughs) but I will make one at some point. We'll figure it out. Maybe, (laughs) maybe when we figured things out in here a little bit better. Um, And yes, so we have to go and work on that. I am Scott going to go. I need, I, um, need to go and get, I want to figure out what is happening up, up in the brain. If it's one thing, five things, just special list things. Uh, that was why I stopped in case you weren't around. I don't even remember when we talked about that stopped Zoloft a while ago, because I don't think whatever my original diagnosis was, it was they were starting to battle each other and it wasn't going well. Um, but I can't get in to see a psychiatrist because they're like our nun. <laughs> so that's cool. I had an appointment. I was three months into my 10 month wait list and then they canceled. They person quit. <laughs> so I was there and they were like, we don't have anyone else. We can't get you in for years, like over a year. And I was like, okay, so that's where we are. <laughs> that's where we are. <laughs> Here we are. I only wish good things for your brain. Thank you. Me too. Uh, I think sunshine is going to get better though. Sunshine is going to make things better and you know, things are okay. Things are better than they were when things are better than they were, which is good. Uh, yes, it does suck. <laughs> I cried on the phone with the person. <laughs> I was like, oh, I need to see someone. Oh, uh, but you know, here we are. Here we are. Yay. Our healthcare system is so perfect and wonderful. And you know, we definitely shouldn't have definitely should keep it just how it is where it's super duper functional. <laughs> oh, send help, send help. Uh, that is the real pandemic. Yeah. And when I worked in North Carolina in primary care, it was about, it was like a nine month, you know, it was so much better instead of 10 months to get into a psychiatrist it was nine months. Right. And the psychiatrist, if you don't know, is very important because they're going to be able to do a full mental health evaluation, which really only they're trained for to make sure that you don't give someone a medicine that all of a sudden will make, you know, that's the right thing for them. Cause if you give people medicine, that's not right for what they have going on, things can really not drive well, and you won't be feeling beneficial. Um, I'm not blocking conversations. So I have not blocked you. So she wolf. So I haven't blocked any conversation. If comments are not showing up, it's because YouTube has blocked them. Uh, the only words that I have blocked on here are the really mean curse ones that I was sick of being called. (laughs) So I don't block anything on my channel. I feel like you're allowed to have discourse as you would like. If you see mostly opinions that are not your own, it's probably because my channel leans more uh, leans more toward, I mean, it's a lot of healthcare people. So we lean more towards sciencey type things. Um, telehealth, uh, I have to go through. So with our insurance, it's kind of just an insurance issue. I have to go through exactly who they tell me to go through, uh, through the insurance that we have. And telehealth is currently not an option. They're, they're seek looking into it after I called them. And I was like, what do you want me to do? Like (laughs) the only place you told me I could go is no longer taking patients. So what would you like me to do? So 
that's where we are. So hopefully tell health will maybe open up. Oh, um, oh, artful adjunct. My son 15 is having thoughts of self-harm and we're having a hard time getting a psych that will take his insurance. I am sorry. That has to be, I cannot imagine that that is one of the more stressful situations I can imagine, especially when it's your child. Um, I so, so hope that you will be able to get in and find someone soon. Look into community mental health, uh, at felt associated with like federally qualified health centers. Um, that is something that sometimes you can do. You can even go around insurance sometimes and just offer to pay based on your income. Um, so look into that, uh, go and check it out. And I'm so sorry. That is so stressful. It is, uh, it is a mess. Um, oh, that is just hard. Um, and like I said, she wolf, I have not blocked anyone that is pro-choice. If there are not other people here agreeing with you, there's just no one here agreeing with you. <laughs> um, yeah, YouTube blocks all of my conversations all the time, Mr. Midwife as well. So, uh, yeah. And I don't have a moderator here tonight. So, <laughs> and I haven't blocked anyone, uh, I can assure you. So, um, YouTube, there's certain words that it doesn't like. So maybe just try rephrasing it. Uh, sometimes you have to post a couple times. <laughs> like I said, I never mind. Cause it's great for my video engagement. Um, but yeah, uh, Chad, I get blocked all the time for things like not blocked, but it won't put through here what I say. Um, and yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so there we go. Um, I do have moderators, but I haven't seen anything that gets blocked yet. So, and I can see, I can see messages, uh, when they get blocked and I haven't seen any. So as I said, I'm never I'm not trying to censor anybody. You're allowed to have your opinion. Uh, but you just have to be respectful about it. Yes. Um, wow. <laughs> um, let me see. Telehealth, mental health, affordable insurance says no. <laughs> They're like, nah, let's not do any of that. Let's not do any of that. Um, Let's see. Uh, yes, it happens all the lot time on TikTok lives and you never see what gets blocked. Yeah, it's very annoying. I do think it's it's a weird line to toe like with. I get why they tr it's frustrating. Right. And I don't have an answer to how social media should moderate itself. Right. Because you don't want flat out lies. Right. Uh, like <laughs> that can be dangerous. Right. Um, uh, and you also want people to be able to discuss things. Right. And so like, where, where do we go from here? Right. Um, don't know, don't know. Uh, but I don't like to block people on my channel. I feel like people are allowed to, as long as you're being respectful and you are not saying something as fact that is actually false. <laughs> if you put blatant, uh, incorrect information, that is, uh, that is, that is not allowed here. And if you're mean to people, that's not allowed here. So those are the, those are the things. Um, it's one thing to be anti-choice and another to place women and girls lives in danger and place the life of an unwanted child in danger. <laughs> Solve that. Yeah. Adrian, I agree. So, um, Aaron, goodbye. I think we're going to sign off here soon too. Uh, got to go back to studying complications in pregnancy. Good night. Good night. Yeah. The safest, <laughs> safest thing ever. Um, uh, so she will, the only, the people who moderate my channel and help me out very much only block information. Like I said, hateful conversation or information that is blatantly false stated as truth. So that's what we don't allow. If you're nice and you're not being, you know, mean or blatantly lying, there we go. Uh, so, you know, that's where we are. Um, yes, please make sure to like the video, share it so that it, the information gets around to other people. Again, this is mostly just going over the lawsuit, um, so that we can understand it. If you were like me and you were just confused about what all this was about. Thanks for being here. I'll let you know what it comes out. What do we think? <laughs> do we think this is going to get over approved or wow, is it going to go? Oh, uh, we will see. We will see. My vote is that this is going to get quickly overruled. Um, or quickly denied. I think the FDA is going to have to do all sorts of stuff to try to fix it. It's going to be a mess because they're very slow. Good luck studying for that. That's a whole, it's a whole different conversation about pain meds that we could be having. Um, yeah. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here, friends. Know that you can do the hard things. You can have the hard conversations. 
Um, it is okay to disagree. We just have to do so politely. You are more than enough. Uh, and you, my friends are not alone. Even if it feels like we're living in a weird country, sometimes where we are alone, you're not alone. We're all in this together. It's going to be, well, it'll be, and we'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, guys.